Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the VESA to make some enhancements to this image. And let's, see, let's go ahead and zoom out so you can see the whole thing here. Actually, since we're in the VESA, we can just double click the hand, I believe, and get. Uh, no, maybe not. Um, let's zoom back out so we can see what's going on here. Okay. So, what we're going to do is we're going to try to bring some of these oranges um, up for this uh, Seattle sky, and we're going to deal with some of the blue and kind of enhance it. But notice there are some sensor spots, and I won't address that um, during this video. Normally, I would clean those up as a first step, but I wanted to show that we're doing this straight from the raw file and that there's no behind the scenes magic happening uh, here. And so, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and put a circle, um, or excuse me, a viewpoint control, um, on the sky. And what we want to do with that sky is, and again, I'm reading from my notes here to kind of mimic what Janice did. This isn't typically how I work, um, you know, by reading notes, but I want to make sure that for those who watch that they can um, watch the webcast, they can kind of get a uh, reinforcement of what they saw there. Um, so she set the contrast to 66, which I can come in here and you see as I hover over these it shows me what these items are. When the viewpoint control is active, one nice feature of Avesa is I can come over here and slide these sliders as well because it applies to the current selection. Um, so she said um, contrast was 66 and so I'm going to just drag this out to 66%. 68, 66, okay. And then she selected the whole sky. She did that and I see when I do that, it did that, it made the buildings really dark. Um, that's not really what we want. So let's go and start addressing that. And so we're gonna just um, click here on the Smith Tower and remove that effect. And we're gonna go come over here on the Columbia Tower, remove that effect. And <clears throat> when we do this, um, whenever you create a, click a control point and don't actually do anything else with it, what that does is it sort of resets it back to the original state. Um, so I can kind of click on these as much as I want to to remove the effect that we created um, up here in the sky. And one cool feature of Vivesa is that for each item I can uh, click here to see what the mask is actually doing. And so as for this other one, uh, this other control, you can see what um, that mask does as it kind of hits a lot of these buildings here. And this takes care of the Smith Tower. And I can use this information to my advantage because if this control wasn't um, where I wanted it to be, I can kind of move it around and see the impact it has. So, you know, I want to make sure I do the building itself and not the sky, um, you know, or whatever feels like it makes the most sense. And so, once I have that positioned, I can let it go. Um, so I actually I use this feature a lot um, to kind of see what happens um, as I apply my masks um, or viewpoint controls. Again, remember viewpoint controls are masks. Um, at the end of the day, they're just very advanced, complicated masks that um, save you a ton of time. This is why the Nick software products are you know my number one recommended product because the time you save using these viewpoints uh, is tremendous. So now. Um, what we're going to do is keep clicking on some of these building parts to make sure they aren't impacting things that shouldn't be impacted. We're going to do some of that as well. And let's see.
Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to select all these guys except for the sky. I'm going to see if I can get fancy here and get them all in one shot. Yeah, we did. So now that they're all selected, cool feature of Avesa 2 is we can create a group of all those. So they all now behave as one. So if I were to come here and crank up the brightness, everything that's impacted would go bright. If I kick it really dark, everything that I selected in that group was, is all dark. So it applies to all the viewpoint controls that I've um, touched here. Another thing we can do is we can come up here and uh, actually see what that group is really doing in terms of a mask. So if I click on here, we see that our buildings are mostly um, white. And so one of the downsides of all these selections we've made is we've kind of counteracted some of what we wanted to do in the sky. So we'll need to make some uh, corrections here on the sky as well by adding some more points kind of down in some of these areas. So let's deselect that. Um, oops. Okay, and so I'm going to click this, and I'm going to see we made a big circle, yeah. So I'm going to do Alt Copy, make sure that this area is getting impacted. The other thing I could do is with a control point is I can click here and do Duplicate, and then just move it. And so I'm going to make this guy a little bit smaller. Make this guy a little smaller. And we're going to just kind of work with these things, tweak them a little bit, and duplicate. And this is just sort of the nature of working with these guys. <laughs> and so um, another one we're going to do is we're going to go add another viewpoint control here around what I call the band roll-on building. Um, and this is in the orange areas because we want to treat these orange areas a little bit differently. And so um, what we're going to do is we're going to set the brightness to 17 and the contrast to 33. So I'm going to show you over here. I can set the brightness to 17. If I wanted to type it in there, I could just type it in. And then the contrast, I can set it to 13. And notice I'm not hitting enter because I hit enter it's going to close the dialog so be careful about that um, I'm just typing it in and uh, moving on uh, excuse me I mean to do 13 do 33 whoops 33 okay and see so, so what we're getting is we're getting a little bit more orange in here let's kind of move it around a little bit make sure we're we're getting it to do what we want it to do. <laughs> and then let's go ahead and apply this out a little bit. I'm going kind to of brighten up oranges. And then we're going to do one here on the Smith Tower. Actually, let's zoom in there. I can't see it very well. guys on here and then what we're going to do for it is we're going to go ahead and give it some structure. Now structure is kind of like sharpening. Um, so we're going to kick this guy up to 44 percent and what that does is it adds more detail. Um, I can go and show you before and after by just simply clicking this off, clicking it on. Let's actually zoom in some more so you can see that result. Uh, a little bit better. And I'm going to move this viewpoint control towards right on here. And so with it on, we have more detail. And with it off, we'll give it a second. It's a little bit softer. Let's see. Let's move it on there like the 
little bit more noticeable on that part. So what we're doing is we're de defining the detail on this building here. And then we're going to go ahead and bring the warmth down on this building. Um, and she did a negative 67, uh, which is quite a bit, actually. So I'm going to do minus 67, 68, close enough. And again, this is to kind of bring the some of that orange saturation that we got when we modified this um, under control. And circle wise, I want to bring that in a little bit. Okay. And then uh, let's see, did she do anything else? Um, oh, I see what she did. So um, one of the things that she demonstrated, I wanted to show you guys, is that. Um, while I'm adjusting this warmth, uh, I can also use my arrow keys. And if you watch the warmth, as I change the numbers that's over here, um, using my left and right arrow keys, I can adjust the number as well. So I can get down to the 53% that she used, <laughs> which is handy if you want to kind of fine tune things you're having a hard time, uh, especially if you're following along with others like I'm doing in this video. Um, so now let's uh, step back a little bit and see what's happening here. Make sure that we're getting a little bit more of an orange sky effect. So that's before, after, before, after. Yeah, I want to spend a little bit more time working on this one here. And feel like something's miss missing, so let's bring a little saturation into this. Maybe a little warmth. And then I'm going to let's see, I'm actually going to do this a little different than Janet. I'm going to isolate this a little bit better. And I'm going to duplicate it, put another one over here. Another one over here, and another one right in there, another one right in here, and another one right in there. Okay, so that's kind of bringing in some of that um, orange sky we get in the evenings. I might move this one up a little bit. Okay. So, if we look at the before and after, before, after. Okay, so now we're going to work on the road here. So, we're going to go zoom in. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to have a little impact on the road right around this area. And so you notice as I click that on immediately it kind of got rid of some of that warmth that had been artificially added to the road. Um, so we're going to go ahead and adjust that even more and desaturate that quite a bit. So that this road looks more like a gray road rather than an orange road. And then we can size that to cover uh, all of the road. We'll deal with this area over here uh, in a little bit. <laughs> and then the other thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and um, brighten up these or adjust these red streaks. So I'm going to come in here and click on some of those guys. And when I do that, it's going to restore it back to its original color. And we're going to go ahead and do a little, we need to try some negative brightness on that. Ooh, a little positive brightness. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and go, I think negative 26 is what Janice did. And um, so for contrast, she did uh, 22. And for structure, she did 
33. And that gives it a um, much more detailed, bright look. Let's see, I'm going to just scope this down a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to zoom out here a notch. And we're going to go make sure this area gets treated the same way. She didn't do that in the demo, I think, because it was a hurry, but I'm going to make sure I do it. So I'm going to take one of these guys and click him right on that. And if you notice, on the right hand of the window, there's this loop that I'm using right above the OK button. And I'm trying to make sure I put it right on one of those red uh, spots. It's this area over here. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this gray to make sure that our roads aren't being contaminated over here artificially either. Now, I'm not sure that this is exactly how I would edit the image, but um, <clears throat> it's, it's certainly one way to do it. Um, I tend to like to have a little bit of color in it, so I might tweak it a little bit there. But for now, let's go ahead and go with this. Um, now, let's see, what we want to do is show you a little before and after. And so, as you can see before, we kind of had a lot of color contamination. Now we got a little bit more um, natural road color, and then our streaks are a little bit brighter. Um, I kind of like the ones uh, there before, so I might, again, I might do it a little bit differently um, if I were doing this exactly as I did my photo. Um, but you kind of get the idea of what's possible. And that's really the more important thing about this video is what you can do. Um, it's up to you to use your creative freedom to come up with the best result uh, for your actual image. And so now we're going to go deal with these uh, road signs. Let me close that up, go back to the regular view and zoom in to the road signs. You see there's a whole bunch in the background here as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the viewpoint control again. Pay attention to the loop. I'm going to put one right here in the green on the Vancouver BC. Let me put it right there. And then what I'm going to do to this is I'm going to reduce the brightness to you know, give it a little bit more color. So I'm going to bring it way back to minus 56. Because as we underexpose, it makes it darker. Um, it kind of also deals with some of the problems with the light here um, and kind of overexposing it. Um, that's actually a, you know, something that you want to experiment with. You could say, you know, hey, do I like it better here where the lights are? Do I like it better up here where it's dark? Hmm. Both have their merit. I'm going to go ahead and put it on the brighter area just for fun um, since I like that more balanced look. <laughs> and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to kick the contrast up. And this is going to be really cool. We're going to kick this up to 22. And again, you can see before and after. This gives it just more uh, detail. Now the fun part is when we add the structure because this takes those with kind of blurry letters. Um, you know, by adding, just changing the brightness and the uh, uh, contrast, we've already improved the readability. The structure again is like sharpening, and so when we boost this guy up to 35 percent, you can really see a huge difference. And here's a little tip for you. If you want to lock this thing down so it's not always moving, I can click this little push pin and I can say, hey, this is where I want to lock it down. So that way, even though I'm working at this level, I can also see another zoom level. So if I wanted to play with that structure, see what it did at different values, I can do that. Although it seems that here on the Mac, that's not updating like it does on the PC very well. So that seems to be a bug. Um, one that, it, again, since I'm on the PC most of the time, I hadn't noticed that one before. But that's supposed to update uh, in real time. 
Um, so I'm going to unlock the loot there. And then finally, the last thing she did, which is something in my image, I actually just deleted, but um, she came in, oops, I guess this is as far as we go, and did something on this railing. And what she did was um, she clicked on the railing and just desaturated it. Oh, 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 one thing before I forget. We want to make sure this circle covers all the signs and so make it a little bit larger so that this express line, you know, something's darkened up. Um, they all get impacted properly. And again, if you hold, I think it's the command key and drag, you can see what all's being impacted. And it's mostly um, the areas that are bright. So if you wanted to affect the whole sign, I move this up to here and then drag. You see it affects the whole sign and that might change some of the settings I used. Given the fact that I was working on this primarily for the highlights, I'm going to go ahead and get back to the highlights and edit it that way. <laughs> um, now, um, for the railing one that we just added, can I put it up here on the brighter part? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to just desaturate it. And that just kind of gets rid of some of that yellow that we were seeing from the street light. And we pretty well got that one covered. If you needed more than one or you wanted to limit the scope, you know, you might come in here and make it a little smaller. And then just alt click and drag a few more of these around so that only that railing was impacted. Um, you may even want to throw one down here, kind of in this area. Uh, maybe even something down a little low in here as well. But you get the idea of what's happening as I add these. It kind of removes that saturation, and especially when you're dealing with multiple you know, shades, sometimes just clicking a whole mess of these suckers where you need it helps a lot. So let's go back out. Let's see what we got. Okay, so we can just clear the preview button so this is what we had before. Oh, if you don't like these things being selected, here's a tip. Click on some spot. Let's see, whoops, she was there, okay. Click on some spots that's deselected. And then when I move up here, out of the picture image, they all disappear. So when I do my after, before, after, before, after. So you notice these red lines are a lot more noticeable. I probably would make them that noticeable. I kind of like um, be a little bit more subtle, but um, Let's just go ahead and go with this for fun. And see so we have a whole lot better uh, yellow, or excuse me, orange um, yeah, in this transition. And you know, again, this is your creative freedom to crank that up more if you want it to be. So I'll click OK. 